Just how big of an impact did Mort have on you personally? Everybody that we work with, I think, had similar experiences with Mort. There wasn't anybody that worked with him that didn't love him, appreciate him. He meant so much to so many to the network itself. The network would not be in the spot it is today if it weren't for Mort. He lifted up so many people along the way. I'm honored to be included in that bunch, but there are so many, too many to list because that's just who he was and that's what he did. He was always incredibly thoughtful. He was full of decency. He was a great man and he's going to be forever missed and remembered. There's so much competition in the news business, as you know, Adam. What were the first conversations like when you first joined ESPN as in the same role as Mort? He welcomed me. He embraced mm -hmm. me. I would not be at ESPN today were it not for Chris Mortensen not only recommending me, endorsing me, signing off on me, but then welcoming me to the network. As soon as I came to work there, he invited me to New York to a restaurant in the city. We met for a long personal dinner where we struck up a relationship that obviously was uh, very close. He meant so much. He could not have been any more gracious and welcoming. And at a time where some people in the business might not be like that, many people in the business might not be like that. Mort wasn't like that because that wasn't who Mort was. Mort was somebody who tried to, again, affect and impact so many people. And he did an incredible job of it. And again, so many people are going to remember his memory. Just today, mm. there is a ESPN cafe worker, Joe, who has fought his own battle with sickness. Yeah. And Joe recalled how Mort was always the one checking in on him to make mm. sure that he was doing well. Because that's the kind of guy that Mort always was. And our thoughts are with his wife, Mickey, and his son, Alex. Yeah, every big moment that any of us had, Mort was always one of the first to reach out and um, doing all that while, well, as you mentioned, Adam, he was fighting his own battles. Adam, thanks for sharing on a day that I know is incredibly tough for you. As you all saw so many of those images of Mort, you saw Hall of Fame quarterback Peyton Manning in a lot of them, and he was very close to Mort. Posted this on Instagram, reading in part, Heartbreak, heartbroken, we lost a true legend. Mort was the best in the business, and I cherished our friendship. He also mentioned trusting Mort to break the news that he was going to the Broncos. Here's a reminder of how that played out on TV. You know how thorough the guy is. You know, I imagine he had a notebook that was, I don't know how long on each team of the pros and cons. And there's pros and cons with each team, I'm sure. I mean, but ultimately, you know, what my understanding is, it always came back to Denver just had – it felt like the right fit. Really thankful to have Peyton Manning with us now. And Peyton, you trusted more to break that news than later the news of your retirement. Take us inside how that went between you two. Well, Mort and I just established a friendship, established trust. And just like Adam Schefter, Mort uh, created relationships. And the information that he was able to gather from me, from owners, from GMs, head coaches, he earned the respect of the people that he was getting information from. And I can promise you, just like Adam, Chris Mortensen uh, had much more information than he ever revealed, right? Because people told him things because they trusted him. So I trusted more. That was a trying time for me, Laura. You're kind of in between teams. Um, the you know local media from the, from the, from the Colts, is, is, uh, you're not really on that team anymore. So I kind of needed somebody to – share information with. I remember asking Mort lots of questions, more mm. new information on some of the NFL teams that I was considering. And he was just a good resource during that entire time. So when I finally decided on Denver, he was the only person I wanted to share that information with because of the respect that I had for him, uh, because of the trust I had in him. And uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's been an incredibly sad couple of days, mm. but just been so thankful to have had Mort as a part of my life. Peyton, you know, your relationship with Mort could have just been athlete and reporter, but what about Mort made it different? Well, my family has a high school passing camp uh, we've had for years in Louisiana, and Mort has been a mainstay at the camp. Uh, he, he comes down to Louisiana every single year, and uh, the, the campers, the coaches are all uh, happy to see him. Everybody knows Mort. I mean, everybody watches 
uh, ESPN. And so Mort's as popular as the college quarterbacks we've had there from Patrick Mahomes to Dak Prescott. Mort's uh, is a big deal. And uh, uh, obviously he loves football. You know, his son Alex uh, is a college quarterback, is coaching now in college football. So he loves football, just loves being around it. And so that's where our relationship really grew and strengthened. And uh, uh, obviously, when he's been going through his adversity, our thoughts and prayers are with him and his courage and his ability to fight this uh, uh, battle has been very inspiring. And then, you know, Laura, when I was deciding to retire, Mort was right in the middle of this fight. But yet he was, once again, the only person hmm. that I wanted to share that information with and actually gave him the story on a Saturday night. And just told him, hey, Mort, can you just hold it for me till Sunday? I, I need kind of just a, a moment to process this. And he did. Nobody else is going to hold that story. Everybody else is going to give that out right away because they don't want to get scooped. But because of the respect that Mort and I had for each other, uh, he held it. It didn't get out. And uh, that tells you everything, everything that you need to know about Chris Morton's. Yeah, that was Mort. Uh, you know, we've talked a little bit about his sense of humor, which is one of my favorite things about him. Have any funny stories about Mort that he might be laughing at right now if he if he saw you telling him? You know, during my uh, time as a free agent, I was doing most of my rehab at, uh, down at Duke University with David Cutcliffe, and I would kind of gotten to the point where I started to throw again, but I was pretty protective of who could see me throw because my arm wasn't the same. But, so we did a workout, and Coach Cutcliffe had one of his players go and film the workout from the woods, kind of a grainy cell phone video, <laughs> and my teammate Brandon Stokely had the video, and he texted Morton. And he said, hey, I've got this footage. And Mort's like, who is this? Uh, who are you? Where did you get this footage? It was classic. I mean, right in front of me, I'm watching Mort try to verify the source, see if this is real footage. And he was doing his job. Most people probably say, hey, give me the video. I'll send it out no matter what. Mort wanted to verify who this source was and how he got that video. And so we got a big kick out of that. And uh, like you said, he was a great prankster. Uh, he came down to interview me and Eli one time. and. I'm doing this serious interview about kind of our draft choices and our off-season expectations. And Eli is just rubbing Mort's hair the <laughs> entire time. And Mort doesn't even flinch. He, he just asks every single question. So always oh. focused on his craft. And so those are memories that I'll always have. They make you laugh. They make you cry at the same mm -hmm. time. But uh, he truly was a legend, and uh, he will be missed dearly. Thank you, Peyton, so much for sharing some of that with us today. Uh, as you said, it's a very sad day, but I know Mort would want us to be celebrating him as much as we could, and I know how much he meant to you, so we appreciate you joining us here on NFL Live. Hey, man, Laura, and, and credit to you, uh, all y'all for your tributes to Mort. And great job, Adam, on that obituary. That was first class, so thanks for having me. Thanks, Peyton. Let's uh, bring Dan Orlovsky and Mina Kimes back in here as we keep talking about Mort affected all of us. Dan, I'll go to you first. How did Mort impact your career? Yeah, I mean, I don't have as good of a story as Peyton, <laughs> but I remember when I first got into this world five or six years ago, um, you know, Mort was one of the first people that would like, get, he would give me the, like I would say something on a show that probably was towing the line and he would pull me to the side, do the whole like grab my <laughs> arm and just be like, hey, Maybe think about saying it this way or, or, or hey, just be careful with what you're doing. And so, um, <clears throat> you know, I didn't know him that well, but the, the moments that I got to spend with him, I was super thankful for in regard to that. He was always trying to help me early on in my career. And then mm -hmm. I think the second thing, Laura, you guys know this, Mina, you know this, th this industry is unique and it's not often um, about trying to help others because it's so cutthroat like many are, right? And it's often individualized and I think, Hearing everybody describe who Mort was over the past 24 to 36 hours, it's encouraging to try to emulate that and try to lead mm -hmm. or build upon that legacy in, in our industry. Yeah, Mort first reached out to me to offer support, encouragement, take an interest uh, about seven or eight years ago. Uh, that was before I was on NFL Live. That was before I was an NFL uh, analyst, pardon me. I was a writer at the time who just loved talking about football and studying it. And I can't tell you how much it meant at that time when I had that job to have someone of his stature with his career uh, take an interest. I mean, candidly, 
It was one of the things that made me believe I could do the job I do now for a living when there was little evidence to suggest it. Um, but that's the kind of person he was. He was really open-minded. He was supportive. He was hilarious. And above all, he was incredibly kind. And like Dan said, yeah. I think the best thing we can do to honor his memory is just try to emulate those qualities um, in our dealings, both within the industry and outside of it. Yeah, this won't shock you guys. My story about Mort has to do with extending a helping hand as well. And we all have so many of these examples, but this one has always stuck with me. A, a few years ago when Tua Tungavailoa was going to be entering the draft and was coming in with injury concerns, I had some good sources at Alabama on the medical side, and I was sharing a lot of the information with Adam Schefter and with Chris Mortensen. And Mort called me one day and he said, what do you know? And I was giving him the latest. And I said, you can use all of that, whatever you want to do with it. You do it and you report it and everything. And he said, no, I want you to report that. He said, I want your name to be on the bottom line of ESPN. And I remember thinking, me? You know, I, I'm just trying to be a conduit of information here and help as much as I can. And he was adamant. And sure enough, that's exactly how it played out. And it was really a leg up for me in a space that I didn't previously have much um, of a leg up in. And, and he was, like Mina said, a real champion for women, a real champion for all of us. So once again, a sad day for us, but we will do everything in our ability to continue to keep Mort's legacy of helping those who are coming up, helping our peers go on here at ESPN. We're thinking and praying for the Mortensen family Thank you for letting us share about our friend Mort.